back, relax and maybe get yourself a snack Me and you gonna have a little chat about books Hey guys, so I am here today to talk to you about the final five SBFBO books that I read for this year's competition these are the last five of my original 30, so of course I'm going to review them like I normally do. And then there will be another video coming very, very soon in which I will tell you all of the ones I most highly recommend and also the one that is going to be my finalist for this year from the bunch of books that I've read. So let's get started. As always, I'm going to go from the ones that I rated the lowest up to the highest. So let's just get started. The first one I want to talk to you about is actually one that is completely different to every other book that I read for the competition, and that is Malice from the Middle Vale. This book is one that I was so intrigued by when I first got sent the batch of books, and it definitely stood out to me, because this is a choose-your-own-adventure style of book, which means that you basically get to sit down and read and create a character and live as part of the world that you are reading about. You make up different statistics, you make up different um, abilities using dice rolls so that it's not too unfair, um, and then you use this character to go through the story and you use them to basically journey around the world and kind of try and do whatever your quest is. So there are different types of choose your own adventure books and when I was younger I did actually read a couple of them that were geared more towards children so definitely not sort of books that um, adults would read necessarily, but I have read them previously and I've enjoyed them. However, this is an adult choose your own adventure book, which means that it is very much heavy on the sitting down, creating your character, sitting down and rolling all the statistics, getting all the score sheets, deducting points, adding points, and so on. And personally, I don't really choose that kind of method for reading. Reading is my sort of sit down and relax time and for me I don't think that really is my relax time. Um, I actually did read a fair bit of this, I think probably around a quarter, although it's hard to estimate exactly how much considering that this book kind of jumps around a lot. So depending on what actions your character decides to do, you have to turn to a certain section in the book and then you read on from there and then you turn to another section and so on. So the sections are fairly short, um, but obviously they're all throughout the book. So you have to sit down and just read through in chunks and pieces and kind of create your own story. Now, for me, that just didn't really work in terms of this competition. It's not a bad book by any means. I only found like maybe one or two typos and the presentation was really strong because there are maps, there are diagrams, there are illustrations. There's a lot of like, intro content as well because it's about 46 pages of the book that are just introduction to the world, to the characters, to how to use the book and play the game and create your character and all of this stuff is really really useful and I read all of that and I did bits and bobs of it but personally it's just not my thing. That's not to say that I didn't give this a good try, I wanted to like it and I just found that it was really hard for me to sit down and read this because often with books when I'm first getting into them I kind of dip in and out and I come back to it when I've got a little bit of time and then I go off and do something else. With this style of book I feel like you really need the time to just sit down, immerse yourself, have some paper and a dice and you can just get really into it but I didn't have that personal time to do that. I just tend to read as and when I can and for me this style of book just did not work. It's also really hard to compare this book to the other books in the competition because it is such a different style. It's not just a sit down and read style, it's very much interactive, it's very much got loads of illustrations and drawings and it's completely different. There are magical elements and aspects to the book depending on which journeys you take, um, but obviously the story is also going to be different for every person. So for me, reading it, it was kind of difficult to see how it could fit into this competition, and in the end I just decided it didn't fit into this competition. It's so far different that it kind of needs to enter a competition for choose your own adventure books, because then it would be something that you could compare to other things of a similar nature. In this competition it's so far out there that it is just on its own and I think unless it was absolutely wonderful I just couldn't really have 
given it a high rating. So for me, it wasn't my personal cup of tea, but it is a good book in terms of a choose your own adventure. I think people who are more familiar with that genre will be able to sit down and enjoy it way more than I did and hopefully have a bit more time to interact and just get really into it. Um, it seemed like it was fairly well written from what I'd read. It seemed fairly stereotypical in terms of the fantasy elements, but it was a good bit of fun and I definitely think people who do read that would probably enjoy it or anyone new to the genre who wants to give it a go. The other thing to note of course is that I did have the PDF version which is really tricky for this kind of book. Um, you need the physical edition. The author did offer to send me the physical edition but it was whilst I was mid-move so I never really got round to accepting it. Um, but yeah in PDF format it's very hard to flip through the pages to the sections you need so I did find that a bit of a struggle. So on the whole, definitely one that I enjoyed, but certainly not one that I think really fits into this competition easily. So I just did not finish that one um, in the time I was given. The next one I read is A Father's Fire, and this one is one that I was a bit unsure about when I started it. It seemed like it could be my cup of tea because I actually really enjoy stories about demons, and this one is definitely that. But unfortunately there was something in this book that I just did not really click with. I again read about a quarter of this before I decided it just wasn't for me. But this one focuses on a young boy who ends up kind of fusing with a demon. And the young boy of course has to battle with the demon within him in order to overcome it. The story itself I thought would be really promising because I do love demons. And actually the Demon Cycle series by Peter B. Brett is one of my all time favourites. I love demons when they're done well, when they're scary, when they're ominous and creepy and they've got a lot of bad guy potential I suppose but for me I just didn't get that vibe enough from this book it just wasn't gripping me in the way that I really needed it to in order to kind of finish it it just didn't keep me excited in the same way that some of the others have and that may just have been a personal clash with the writing or clash with the story and the direction it took I'm not entirely certain but I just think it wasn't for me. Roshin who is the main character felt fairly flat to me in general. He didn't feel like he had an awful lot of personality. A lot of the time we were being told as a reader that he was really great and he was amazing, but we weren't really seeing that. So I just felt that was slightly lacking. Overall, what I read just wasn't enough to pull me in. As I say, um, it's not to say it's a bad book and maybe for someone else it would work, but for me, it just wasn't the right kind of read at the time. And I just, I couldn't really get into it. So unfortunately I DNF that one as well. The next one I read is called Faces in the Mist and this one is one that I was again quite intrigued by, it's a fairly shadowy cover. I wasn't really sure when I started reading it whether it would be my kind of thing because it's got much more of a contemporary feeling to it than some of the other books I've been reading and personally sort of urban fantasy and contemporary settings of fantasy don't always work for me, they can be quite hit or miss. It's definitely not the kind of book I would naturally gravitate towards, but with that being said, I actually did enjoy this more than I expected, so that was good. And I was quite impressed with the immediacy and fast pacing of the writing whilst I was sitting there reading it. Fast and easy to get through, but also intimate and had some good character moments too, so it was good, it was enjoyable. This is the story of Jacob, who's a young boy, but it also turns out he's actually a turner. Jacob Turner. Being a Turner never really seemed to face him before but one day it turns out that there are people after him for some reason and he's not sure why, he doesn't really understand these new powers that he suddenly seems to possess. He learns that people are after him and he needs to go into hiding and go and train and learn how to really unlock the power and potential that he has. Along the way he also meets other people who are sort of gifted in similar ways and eventually he and the others end up looking into fighting the supernatural entities and things like that that seem to be coming into the world. As I said, um, Jacob is a fun character, but he's actually also meant to be around 12 years old, so he's quite a young character. And I do think that the naivety is there at first, but then it loses its way a little bit. And because of the mature theming, even though he is 12, I would say it's maybe more aimed at sort of YA or new adult readers. Personally, although I liked the fast immediate style of writing and I do think that having Jacob as the narrator worked well, I still didn't feel like I fully understood and connected with him at times and there was something slightly lacking. I can't quite pin down exactly what that was but maybe it's just the fact that he's a young boy and I never was that so it's hard to really relate. I found myself in the end thinking that although it was a fun story 
it didn't stand out enough from the rest of the stories that I'd read and I don't think it's going to be one that is hugely memorable to me with time so I ended up giving it three out of five stars which is six out of ten for SPFBO. The next one I want to talk about is called The Hidden Face and this one is by S.C. Flynn. I've actually previously read a book by this author so I was intrigued to see how the next book this author brought out was going to be because that one was a standalone and this one I think is the start of a series or a trilogy, not entirely sure how many there will be. But this book definitely was fun, I enjoyed it the whole way through and although I had my niggles I think it's certainly one that was definitely an easy enjoyable read with some potential. Now this story does deal with sexual manipulation and exploitation. There's also quite a few other areas of the book which are quite dark in theme and some sections that I found a little bit uncomfortable but there are some good moments as well between the characters. I do also feel a little bit like there is some kind of alienation for disfigurement in this book and the mental health and disfigurement I just didn't feel like was handled quite as well as I would have liked to see it. I know authors do their own thing with their stories and they're not always trying to raise awareness or any of that kind of thing at all but for me I just think when you are dealing with topics are relatable to real life people you have to think a little bit carefully about how you approach them and I think that could have been done more so with this story because there are some elements that I found quite mm, not great. So this story follows the character of Day Raven who is a young man who has been exiled or kind of taken away as a hostage to another kingdom where he grows up most of his life. He then eventually ends up coming back to the kingdom of his birth but this is many many years later and most of his childhood has been spent in this other place. So he's very familiar with sort of foreign customs and a lot of people aren't really sure whose side he's on including him. So he's coming back to the kingdom to try and find out what's happened in his absence and see what his king has to say to him and also meet up with an old tutor and acquaintance of his. Day Raven is a young man who likes to work out puzzles and kind of be involved in puzzle solving and trickery and that sort of thing and he really excels at that. I think he does a great job. Um, the story has a lot of puzzles and kind of connected things, clues, stuff like that um, that you can enjoy as a reader so that was fun. The other main character who is following is called Suniva and she is a young woman who's actually disguised as a soldier when he first meets her and she is on the hunt for her missing father who has gone and no one seems to really know where or what's happened to him so she's trying to find out. She also is on the hunt for the same acquaintance as Day Raven so they end up meeting one another when they find this acquaintance to be dead and they're trying to find out who killed him, why and what the secrets are that have been left for them as clues by the tutor and also possibly her father. So there's a lot going on in the beginning, um, there's quite a few different characters that we follow besides these two, they're just the main ones. Overall I felt like this was a fun read, as I say there's lots of characters, it's got some good moments between those characters, there is a little bit of kind of insta love which was a little bit annoying, however I do think that the character of Twister who's one of the other sort of more major characters is really bizarrely handled and that's where the disfigurement thing comes in, he's a hunchback um, and his hunchback has some sort of power to it or he imagines it does because he has some mental health stuff going on. He's been through a very traumatic thing and he's had a really hard life and it seems like he is not handled well as a character. He's been through some horrible things so obviously he's going to have some issues to deal with but I just don't feel like he deals with them in the story. Actually he ends up getting manipulated even more and pushed around and I just I felt so sorry for him and I didn't feel like he was handled at all carefully by the author. He was just thrust out there into the world and he had to just get on with it. A lot of the characters who we do see as background characters are sort of just deemed evil for evil's sake. There's not an awful lot of motive and I would have liked to see some more complexity when it came to them just to kind of really find out who's who and why give us a bit more backstory that would have been great. Again I did enjoy the puzzle element I thought that was fun and I ended up giving this again three out of five stars which equates to six out of ten for SPFPO. And the final one that I have to review in this set of reviews is The First Fear 
This one is by MS Olney and I've actually picked up a book again by this author previously and I ended up DNFing the book last year because it just didn't quite work for me. However, I'm happy to say that I did enjoy this one a lot more than last year's entry and I definitely think this will be a book that many of you guys would probably like. So this one is a story that focuses on a young boy called Elian and his friend Lizella. They grow up together in a town, they're best friends, and they are often out just in the woods having adventures and just enjoying themselves. However, we pick up the story quite early on when Elian kind of discovers he has magical powers all of a sudden. So he learns that he is an empowered one, and then he quickly learns that empowered ones are very much banned, illegal, not allowed to exist in this world. There is a leader called the Supreme who is very much in charge of everyone, um, she's very oppressive and it seems like she is determined to find him because the moment his powers wake up people are dispatched to go and find him and even before they can get back home they find out that the village has been invaded. There are things in this world called hollowed who are really scary creatures and people who come out and hunt down others. Um, there's also people who are gifted and have like one ability maybe. Um, empowered people have multiple abilities and the magic system is based around emotions so different emotions will give you different powers for example anger will give you strength and so on. There's quite a few different ones and I actually found out that there is a key at the back of the book to these different powers but it's at the back of the book so I didn't find out about it until the very end um, which was slightly irritating because it would have been good to have it at the beginning but never mind. Um, in general I thought it was actually a really fun concept and I like the idea of the magic system. So in terms of Elian and Lizella I found them to be okay characters, I didn't feel like they really stood out enough um, from some of the other characters, they kind of do a lot of stereotypical things and their story is quite a stereotypical one in general. There are quite a lot of tropes and different moments that you could maybe predict so I think there is an element of predictability but if you like a good old classic fantasy romp then this is that book with some new magic systems so there's a lot to like about it if you are interested in just good old fantasy. My biggest pet peeve with this book was the spelling mistakes which I had quite a few of in my edition however I do believe that the author has since corrected these he's told me but obviously I have to review the edition I was sent from the very beginning of the competition way way back but that's many months back so hopefully these are fixed by now. So in the end I gave this one also a 3 out of 5 stars it's definitely a fun one and certainly one I enjoyed and think many of you would so that equates to 6 out of 10 again and I have finished my SBFBO reading with that so I'd love to hear in the comments which book of these five you are most interested in reading and then also don't forget that I will be uploading a highly recommended and finalist video very soon and then the next process is to read all the other finalists and choose a winner so that is very exciting thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video bye guys Thank you for watching my video today Go pick up a book, then come back and chat with me again